Good evening. Thank you for staying around. Wasn't that an incredible performance? Isn't it great to be in the theater, experiencing live theater together? Yes. And with that, you know, that's been no easy feat. So I want to thank everybody at this theater, the security, the stage managers, the understudies, the swings, the cast, the creatives, and you, the audience, that come and support these shows. Theater is back, and because theater is back, our, our great city is going to come back. So thank you so much for being here tonight and supporting live theater. And you're experiencing working in the theater live. So welcome to a working in the theater live featuring the women of company. So without further ado, I would like to welcome them to the stage. Welcome the company's brilliant director, Marianne Elliott. The amazing... And they're having cocktails. I, I, I don't know if the bar is still open, but we're going to have a good time here tonight. And Katrina Lank. And the Broadway newcomer, Patty Lapone. <laughs> Also, the bartender for this evening, she's available to do your events. Um, we'll be giving her a card and information out later. Uh, Jennifer Samard. <laughs> Nikki Renee Daniels. <laughs> and last but not least, Rashidra Scott. Fantastic. Well, Marianne, we're going to start with you. And revivals are a tricky business, especially with a show that has a glorious history, as this show does. And there are lots of points of view out there about when do you revive, do you revive, and how do you revive? And you've done it brilliantly. So can you tell us a little bit about how you came to company and how you approached this? And, and we'd, I'd love to know if you have any philosophies in general about revivals. Um, well, uh... I, I'd always loved Company as a as a as a musical. I actually never seen it. I still have never seen it, other than this production. Um, but I knew the music really well. And when I set up a theatre company with Chris Harper, um, we wanted to do yeah. We wanted to do um, productions that were celebrating women somehow. And Chris knew this. This, this uh, was a, a love of mine, this, this particular musical. I had tried to do it before and hadn't been allowed to several times. Um, and he said, why don't we do it with Bobby as a woman? So um, I looked at it and looked at the script really carefully, the book and everything, and thought, actually, if we were to modernize it and set it now, it could work really, really well as a woman. So that was one of our first productions that we decided to do. Do you think not seeing it helped you? Um, I think if you're directing something, it's really helpful if you don't see really good productions. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's helpful if you don't see it or if you see not very good productions. <laughs> Because, you know, I mean, a director, whoever they are, they have their own ego and they might be completely wrong. But, you know, when you see something that's not very good, what happens is you kind of go, oh, I shouldn't be like that. It should be like this. <laughs> <gasps> oh, let's do that. <laughs> um, and because I'd only ever heard it, I really didn't know what the book was like. So, it, it, therefore, it just allows you to not be too influenced. If you see something that is really brilliant, why do it? Because it's been done brilliantly and you've got nothing new to say, so. Of course, that's what you think, but what, you did have something to say, clearly, um, and something beautiful to say. I'd love for the cast to weigh in on that, too. 
Um, was there something that you brought from your past experience with company that either helped or hindered you or that you had to um, get over or, you know, any, anything from the past? Katrina? Uh, like Marianne, I hadn't seen a production of the show before, so I didn't have any preconceived notions, really, of it. Um, so, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Patty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think, um, I mean, I've been in productions. I don't think I've seen a production. I didn't see any of the revivals. Oh, yes, excuse me. I did. I, see jo I saw John Doyle's production, but I didn't see the one that Boyd Gaines was in. So, but did you say something about being a, bringing your past into the? And just, you know, if there was something from company or Sondheim when you came into this that either hung over you in a, in a. Elaine Stritch. <laughs> a big one. <laughs> but Elaine is an incredibly generous woman, was an incredibly generous woman, and um, appreciated talent all the time. And um, I remember when I sang this at the New York Phil on Steve's 75th, um, I was asked to sing Ladies to Lunch, having never done the show before. And I, <laughs> and Elaine was sitting right there. And um, I felt confident to be able to sing it in front of Elaine because Elaine made me feel that way. Um, do you know what I mean? It was like, she didn't say anything to me. It was just sort of uh, something that happens between performers maybe, where there's, this, there's a thread of generosity, a passing of the torch or whatever you want to call it. And, I remember saying to Lonnie Price, where's Elaine sitting? <laughs> and she was to my, my left, and I gave it, when I said, does anyone still wear a hat, I gave it to Elaine, because Elaine was wearing a hat. <laughs> That's beautiful, and I think, you know, so true in our community that there is that creative generosity that goes from performer to performer. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> it's your turn. Yes. Um, like my wonderful oh. colleagues on the end, I had never seen a production. I, the original production was in 1970. That happened to be the year I was born. <laughs> and uh, it was a little ahead of my time, and so, and life goes on. So I never saw it, and I do think that helped me in a way just to maybe come into the audition doing, like Marianne, I really looked at the text and I thought, this, I'm gonna try this. And thank God you liked it. <laughs> and then uh, I will say Barbara Berry has been lovely and has opened up her heart to me. And we've emailed one another. She was the original, Sarah. And I've been a fan of hers since I was 11 years old. I saw a production on HBO of Barefoot in the Park. And I thought she was brilliant. You can still find it on YouTube, the top of Act Two. It's incredible. And it's one of the first times I learned what comedic timing was. And all my girlfriends wanted to be the lovely Bess Armstrong, who was the ingenue. I said, not me. I want to be the character actress. <laughs> and so uh, I'm really happy to have met her and um, to play Sarah, because I love her very much. And I thank you for casting me. <laughs> Wonderful. <She's> Nikki. <laughs> I too have never seen the show, but when I was in college, I was actually in the original production. They had four ladies who sang in the pit with the orchestra. Wow. Uh, and so I, in college at Summerstock, um, I was one of the four ladies who sang in the pit. <laughs> so I got Amazing. to watch, it was a production with Malcolm Getz played Bobby and I think Michelle Park was Joanne. And you know, I was in college, I thought, oh, that's a great show for older people. <laughs> intrigued by the idea of a female Bobby. I mean, like Marianne said, it just brings it into the now. No one really cares about a single 35-year-old man these days. It's yes. so common. Well, well, we'll get into that in a minute. <laughs> um, also, in, in our scene, uh, Jenny and David, the genders are swapped in our scene as well. Right. So um, Christopher does what the original Jenny, Terry Ralston, did in the scene, and I sort of play David. So. Uh, that was really neat, sort of finding the different gender dynamic, not just with Bobby, but with her friends. Can I just say that Marianne empowered women in this production in every scene. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, you can. And we're, we're taking our power and we're empowering each other, right? <laughs> Rashidra. I thought I was off the hook. Um, same. <laughs> you're off the hook, never. <laughs> uh, same, I also had never seen it. Uh, Marianne has heard me tell this story ad nauseum that I almost didn't come in for this. Uh, <laughs> um, I, a group of girlfriends, there's four of us and three of us had the same audition for Susan. And I just knew one of the other girls was getting this. And I was at another show across the street. I was tired. I think one day between shows on Saturday, my audition was Monday, the Saturday, I finally decided to try to find something. And I found on YouTube the New York Philharmonic uh, production that I believe has since been taken down. Um, <laughs> uh, and I watched it to try to give myself an idea of the story of the show. Little did I know there isn't really one, so that didn't help much. <laughs> Uh, and the only reason I came in was because my girl said, we do not turn down principal auditions. Even if you don't book this, you still go. And I was like, fine, you're right. And so I begrudgingly went still knowing I wasn't gonna book it in like three weeks past and I hadn't heard anything and I'm checking all of the things <laughs> to see who booked it. And then all of a sudden my agent called and said, you got it. And I said, ha. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, it, it, and similar to Nikki, it, our, my scenes with Greg Hildreth are word swapped. So I, as Susan, am playing the typical male part of Peter. Um, and Greg gets to be all afraid of heights and fainty swoony Peter. <laughs> amazing, amazing that most people didn't have much connection with it. That's really interesting. Marianne, when you revive something, oftentimes the creator isn't alive, but Stephen Sondheim was alive, and you did get to have some conversations with him. How did he feel when you first approached him with the idea? No, he said. <laughs> uh, he, re he really wasn't keen. Um, he really actually wasn't keen. But luckily I, I had met him before, because luckily he had seen a production that I'd done of St. Joan. And he loved it and he asked me to come for dinner. Uh, and I can't believe I actually did because I was terrified. <laughs> um, but I did go for dinner and that sort of gave me an in. And, that, and so I sort of said to him, can I come round again? And can I just talk to you about my idea? I know you don't think it's a good idea, but just let me just talk to you about the idea. <laughs> and um, Joel Fram, who's our musical director, uh, basically had to talk me down off a ledge <laughs> before we went round to Steve's house um, and then also after we left Steve's house. Um, <laughs> but, but I did persuade him to, to give us a chance and to, to do a workshop. So we did a workshop in London and we... Um, <laughs> is she handing out cheeses? Okay, good. I don't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> she literally makes the strongest gin and tonic. That is like... <laughs> <laughs> um, so we did this workshop in London where we tried it out and we were just, we just stood, stood up and you know, read through all the scenes and sang through all the songs in the way that I imagined it could be done with the, some of the gender switches and um, exactly the same book. Um, and he watched it. I did say to him, please, will you watch it with some other people in the room? <laughs> And please, will you watch it with some women? And please, will you watch it with some young women? Um, and he, he did. And I think I was directing Angels in America out here and I got the call. I got the call when I was in rehearsals, uh, and he said, "Yeah, I think, I think, I think, yeah, I think we could do it. I think we could, we could work on this." I thought, "Oh, you're going to work on it with me? Oh my god!" <laughs> um, but it was absolutely brilliant because he was so generous. I mean, so generous, um, so open. We would talk about literally every line, every lyric. It would take him weeks to change a word. Um, I'm not joking, and he eventually we got to the point where he sent me an email quite late on this is, and he said, you know, Marianne, I'm, I'm in my 90s, I'm a guy in my 90s, you're going to have to tell me what it's like to be a woman in a, who's 35. <laughs> <laughs> and he was really, really very open. I mean, there was a, a time in London where we had 
quite a heated discussion, I would say, about TikTok. Um, <laughs> because he didn't think it should be in. And uh, he said things like, well, you know, I, I don't think you should have a dance piece in a musical. And I said, but you wrote it as a dance piece originally. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> we got into something quite jokey, I think, as far as he was concerned. He decided to invite all his friends to London to see the show and vote as to whether they thought TikTok should be in or not. And I just kept arguing back because I felt so passionately about it. And again, in the end, he just said, you know what, you feel more passionately than I do. You should keep it in, it's your production. I mean, wow. Amazing. Yeah. But what do you think the turning point was when he actually saw the work and heard it? Yeah, well, he came to the first preview, so you can imagine how much weight I lost that, <laughs> that night uh, in London. And um, he cried a lot. He did mm. do a lot of crying, in a good way. <laughs> um, and from then on, he was a major advocate. You know, he was a great fan. And again, you know, he sat over there on our first preview when we reopened after the pandemic. And there was this follow spot that followed him on. He tried to skulk in. It was like this white light. And it, it, even now, it feels like quite angelic. And I was sitting up there, and I could hear his laughter from up there throughout the whole show. And after the show, we all had drinks at the back of the stalls there for literally hours. I mean, how old was he? I think, like, going to be... He was 92, I think. Um, and we were standing there for hours, having more and more drinks. He was the last person to leave. <laughs> Um, and just saying things like, I wish George Firth could have seen it. Amazing, amazing. Oh, may, may I add to that? That's the last thing he said when I said goodbye to him. He said, uh, and he cried, but he said, I'm going to go home and tell George all about it. Oh, amazing.